Praise the name of Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Maurice Gashero, Senior Pastor Jubilee Christian Church, Thika Road, and this is Gospel Talk, where we get to discuss the gospel of Jesus Christ in a way that is plain and understandable. There are no two ways of becoming righteous. The only acceptable righteousness before God now is the righteousness he gives and the bible says thy righteousness are as filthy rags the gospel of jesus christ is called good news so our bodies receive life from the spirit well thank you very much for joining us this is the Gospel Talk again with Pastor Maurice Gasheru and Pastor Pauline Gasheru, Jubilee Christian Church, Dika Road. My name is Solomon Were, and I'm glad to be joining Pastor Maurice here. Pastor Maurice has been doing the book of Ephesians, the, uh, before Christ, after Christ, in Christ, and the, you know, the gifts of his grace today, uh, the examples of his grace, and today we are on the gifts of God. Of course, the grace of God is a gift of God, but he will be explaining to us how this is related to our salvation, how it's not of work, and how we have been made his workmanship through the grace of God as a gifting of God. I am happy to be joining you, Pastor. Last time was, I was emotional. Yeah, yeah, last time was powerful. It was powerful. Remember, please, these are all new episodes. Brand new episodes. We are, we are, we are getting deeper into Ephesians. Mm. We have not discussed this before. So these are new episodes. And as you're saying, last week was amazing. Oh, yes. And yeah. we, together, we kindly request you to like, comment, and share. Share because someone wants to hear what you're hearing. Uh, Pastor Morris always says that if you can understand the book of Ephesians, you can understand the book of Romans. Then you are a workman, <laughs> mm. fit for every good work. Yes. Yeah, thank you so much. And Pastor, today we are, uh, just to give you a background, I don't want to talk much. I want to listen to you more. Mm. <laughs> That's why I'm cutting the intro. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 7 that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. And then it goes to gifts. For by grace you have been saved, through faith, that not of yourself, of selves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. I think, Pastor Solomon, one of the most misunderstood or ununderstood, if there's something like that, in English, and understood concepts in, or realities in Christianity is grace. The Bible says there in verse 7 that, that we might be examples of his grace. Mm. And then it tells us in verse 8 what that grace does. That examples, that we might be examples of that grace. Mm. So he's trying to show us, and this is a further explanation of us is a build-up, really, of verse 7. And he says, for. That means, because by grace. Mm. So it's like you, you want to say that we may be examples of his grace, yeah? Mm -hmm. The future generations. The grace of his kindness yes. and his goodness towards, towards us. In Christ Jesus. Because by grace you have been saved. All right. So the first expression of the grace of God we see here has to do with the fact that this grace we are talking about has to do with salvation. Oh, yes. That it is by this grace that we are supposed to be examples of. Meaning then that we are supposed to be the physical manifestation, exemplification, and portrayal of salvation. What is, saved? What is salvation? Mm. You know, because we are saved. So 
the example of grace we are supposed to be begins with the act, the, 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 the reality of salvation. Because the first thing we see grace doing is that by grace we are saved. saved. So that aspect of being saved means that is the highest expression of God's kindness and goodness. Mm. You know, because when people look at God's kindness, mm. goodness, mm. they think about things Positions. that he might give you. Mm. Things, what they privileges. call material blessing that he can be able to confer or to give. And that's okay, that's good. Mm -hmm. But the highest expression of divine kindness and goodness is in salvation. That is why you cannot fully understand grace if you have not understood salvation. Mm. Because salvation is purely a, a, an act of divine grace. What? Yeah. Yes, please explain salvation, Pastor. Yeah. So when you're talking about grace, you are talking about number one, that something, something, some, or some, some things that somebody, in this case God, has done without you are canvassing, you are trying to um, twist him, manipulate him, or even prayer, or asking, it means it is purely voluntary. And that's where we talk about the sovereignty of God, that he himself willed it, he wanted it. And we saw that in Ephesians chapter 1, that this was according to his good pleasure. The good pleasure of his will. Okay? So he did not do this because somebody interceded. <laughs> he did not do this because somebody sowed a seed. He did not do this because somebody prophesied. He did not do this because somebody did something. Mm, it's by grace alone. And even the prophecies that came, mm. they came because God put them in the hearts of the prophets so that they can speak what God has already wanted to do. So it's purely divine volition. God wanting by himself. Mm. By grace alone. It's divine initiative. Hey. All right? So <laughs> salvation is an innovation of God. It's a plan of God. It's God's ingenious means of saving mm. fallen man, fallen humanity. Mm. It All right? is God's divine intention yeah. and God's divine execution. Yes. So that also means that grace cannot be as a result of something somebody has done. If it is as a result somebody something somebody has done, then it's payment. Then grace becomes a response. All right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's then a response. Mm. That God responded to what we did. Mm. He was moved. Or he, moved, he was moved. <laughs> or... He's doing it as a result of payment. He's paying somebody for... No, no, no. Grace is never payment. Okay? Yes. If it's not payment, also grace never accrues a debt. It means God did not do it, does not give you grace <laughs> on credit so that you can repay him later. <laughs> In some one way or another. Yeah. So it is an act of divine will mm. all right his sovereignty his evolution his will and his choice has provided for it to the end yes so that is grace then you see also grace mm. when extended to a person grace can never be commensurate to the act the qualifications, all right, or the merit. So grace is not meritocracy. I've, I'm sure you have heard this statement that favor is not fair. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have. Because the world works on fairness, yes. God works on grace. And grace, it means he gives you what you do not deserve, what you can never win, mm. you can never earn, mm. and you can never deserve. So there is no, absolutely no qualification on our part. That is the depth of grace. That is the basis of salvation. In fact, if you look at the understanding of 
the ones we call church fathers, mm. early church fathers, apostolic fathers, those are the ones that ministered immediately after the apostles. Mm. We have the early church fathers, then we have the apostolic fathers. These are the ones that, you know, really put the foundation of doctrine, people like Augustine of Hippo and others. When you see them discussing grace, they say you cannot talk about grace without understanding the depravity of man. How far humanity mm. had gone away from God. Oh, yes. All right? Oh, yes. So this person that God is showing grace is not that a person that was half bad, half good. Mm -mm. As a person who has totally gone away from God. We are talking about complete disqualification. It's not just being unqualified, oh, yes. but it's also being disqualified. Mm. Are you getting? Yeah. So these are the ones that God shows grace. Mm. Because all of us were disqualified by sin. Mm -hmm. Were disqualified by our, our acts. Yes. That, you that, you, you that, get? Yes, that we made had, us dead. Yeah, we had sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That means we were disqualified for the glory of God. You wow. see? So that's the uh, acts of grace. And then there is what the grace brings, the gifts of grace. Because grace also talks about divine endowment. All right? Divine endowment. And the entire concept of salvation, the reality of salvation, has to do with the grace of God. That is why in John chapter 1, he says, Jesus came full of grace. Yes. Yes. Out of his fullness, we have received grace upon grace. You see? So, salvation itself is an act, is the act of pure grace. And if you look at how we were redeemed mm. and how we were saved, mm. all right? Number one, we see the, 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 the aspect of substitution, that a good man, sinless man, tried as we are yet without sin, mm. one who knew no sin, mm. took our place. Who would like, even parents sometimes would not like to take the place of their children. Oh, yes. You see, so we are seeing what is it's called the substitution, the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ, mm. that he took our place in death, mm. in the punishment of sin. He took our place. It was not his place. It was not his debt he was paying. It is our debt he was paying. So we see the acts of grace. All right? Mm. And that's what we see that in, in Romans mm. uh, chapter 5, mm. from around verse 6, he says that, you know, uh, 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 he says, for when we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Yes. For scarcely, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Will, will, will one die. He says, even for a good man, mm. Somebody will not die. Mm. Yet, perhaps, for a good man, someone would even dare to. So he's not dying for good people, but God demonstrates his own love to us as in that while we were yet st sinners, sinners, or still sinners, Christ died for us. So Jesus takes the place of bad people. That is grace. Not good people. Mm. He didn't die for good people. Mm -mm. He died for bad people. Mm. And that's grace. Is. That is substitution. All right? right. And then having saved us, mm -hmm. having done so as yeah. I, as I uh, uh, proceed. Yes. Oh, that is powerful, Pastor. He gives us a position mm. of joint heir with him. Oh, yes. That we share everything he has. That's another act of pure grace. So he, does, he doesn't just die for us. Mm -hmm. To make us free mm -hmm. and acceptable and reconciled to the Father. Mm -hmm. But he shares with us his inheritance. That's what joint heirs are. He, they share. He brings, us, he brings us where he is. He brings us and we are now endowed with what he, he has. has. That's pure grace. Complete. That's so 
Grace is one of the things that is, whenever people hear the mention of grace, they think is the encouragement of people to sin. And that actually tells you. Whenever I hear such a statement, my first reaction is that this person does not even understand <laughs> anything about grace. Because the, the person who, who is saying that, if they are born again, he himself is a work of grace. <laughs> Him being born again. So we limit grace to the license to sin. We don't see grace for salvation, redemption, reconciliation, substitution, mm -mm. inheritance. Mm -mm. We don't see grace in that. Wow. We, people only see grace when they are talking about sin. <laughs> or when somebody desires to do ministry at a particular level, they say they want grace to enable them to do certain things. All right? Mm. And that's the other level of God, grace. Mm. Grace as divine enablement. Mm. Grace as the empower system, mm. empowerment system mm. of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. It empowers us to do mm. what in our own ordinary capacity mm -hmm. we will not be able to do. So that basically is a grace. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says, by grace you, you have, have been, been saved. saved. So it begins there. It begins there. Because this package of salvation is not given to people who merit it, who have worked for it. It's been given as a gift. And that's why we are talking about the gifts of God. Because this scripture has confused many people. Oh, yes. Because when, oh, yes. if you read it, it says, for by grace, grace you are saved. saved. Through faith and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. So there, there are three things. Yes. There is grace. grace. Uh -huh. There is saved. Faith. Yes. Have you been saved? saved. And there is faith. Mm. Of those three, what is the gift of God there? <laughs> wow. Is it for by grace you have been saved through faith? Yeah? That is not yourself. It is a gift of God. Is grace the gift of God? Is the grace, being saved the, the gift, gift of, of God? Is, is faith the gift of God? So which one is it is the it is a gift of God. So which one is the gift of God? The three of them are the gifts of are God. Are all gifts of God. They are free. There is none of them you have to earn. For in by fact, grace it, you have been saved. So that grace <laughs> is not yours. Hey. Is given. That salvation, being saved itself, is not works. Mm -mm. Is not your ability. You have not earned it. Is a gift. The faith itself. Mm to receive because re faith has a has has to do mm -hmm. with 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 the, with the, grace has to do with access yes. faith has to do with receiving yes believing that he is and that, that that god is the one saving you yes you see god all of them are the works of god mm. they are the gifts of god oh, so yes. this is what happens jesus died on so the cross yes comes and dies on the cross. Then he gives you grace. Uh -huh. He gives you f grace to be saved. Grace to accept. Uh, yes. Grace, grace to be saved. Sa yes. And then to be able to receive that salvation. Uh -huh. he gives to receive and accept that salvation is faith. He equips you with faith. He gives you faith. His own faith. To everyone is given the measure of faith. His own faith. Faith is not something we come up with. No, 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 no. If faith was something we come up with, then salvation would be in levels. <laughs> because <higher> all <laughs> of us, there is nothing, Pastor Solomon, mm. there is nothing, even identical twins can do yeah, mm. uh, at the same level. Mm -mm. All of us, when we are doing stuff, we yeah. do at different levels. Yes. So there are those who are better, yeah. there are those who are slower, there are those who are faster, there are those who are, you know, need improvement. Mm, mm. You get? Yes. So if it is our faith mm. that would determine mm. salvation, then we would be getting salvation in different degrees. So according to the degree of our faith. We were given uh, faith enough. To accept the and time. that is the difference between before the cross and after the cross. Oh yes. Before the cross, when the people came, 
to be healed. Yes. They were told your faith. Yes. Your faith, that faith you have shown by coming mm-hmm. has made you whole. Mm-hmm. But after the cross, yes. Jesus us. dies. Yes. It's no longer our faith. It is his faith. It is his faith. Why is it necessary? It's because what we have in salvation, this great salvation, the expanse of it, all right? Mm. The magnitude of it, mm. yeah? Even our own faith cannot generate that. <laughs> it's beyond our capacity. Oh, of... When you're talking about infinite grace, mm. uh, limitless grace, unsearchable grace, unfathomable grace, who has that faith <laughs> to be able to believe even things? You know that faith works by what you know. Mm. Faith works by you cannot be believing God for what you don't know. Mm -mm. Yet, in Christ, we've been given even what we do not know. So when somebody receives Jesus Mm. and is saved, all right, accompanying salvation are things that even now, 2,000 years later, church has not discovered. (laughs) Church has not discovered Are you getting? Yeah, that is why Paul is writing to Hebrews Mm. and Corinthians. Mm. Corinthians was a church Mm. which was known to have gifts. And that's the danger of confusing gifts of the spirit with maturity. That has always been the problem in the church. Where people confuse the gifts of the spirit with maturity. Yet those are the ones that Paul calls babes in Christ. They were so gifted, yet babes. They, they, they fell short in no gift, <laughs> yet they were babes in Christ. Paul had to teach them how to prophesy one after the other. He said, let not prophecy be competition. Mm, you prophesy, protocol. then shut up. Mm. Let the other person interpret. <laughs> Are you getting? Mm. He had to teach this church how to partake Holy Communion. Without grumbling. Without grumbling and without taking. You know, those <laughs> days bread was like the whole bread. Yes. Chapati, kind of. Yes. Unleavened, puffy, yes. you know, whole bread. Yes. So you're supposed to cut your piece and hand over. <laughs> so it's, everybody cuts and hands over and cuts. It's, that's why it's called breaking bread. Mm. So they would break bread and hand over. Mm. Break bread and hand over. Some break people. bread and hand over. So it will get to this, <laughs> gent- this fella. Yes who had been out there, maybe had not even had lunch and breakfast, he would refuse to hand over. <laughs> he would, he, or he would break half of it, <laughs> remain with the half and, and pass the other small piece. Mm. You get. So Paul told them, when you come to break bread, eat at home first. So that you're not coming to fill yourself up in, in partaking Holy Communion. Mm. Are you getting? Yes. Yeah, so, these people are mm. called babes. The reason being that uh, uh, maturity and faith is not is not is not related. M- maturity and gifts. Maturity and gifts are not related. Yeah, no, no, no. So the the, the gifts don't mean you're mature. Somebody's mature. <laughs> Pastor, you've mentioned something that I want to kindly uh, before I go to uh, today. I want to be reading you a verse. And then, and then you elaborate. Okay. Now, now uh, in the book, uh, uh, from where we read, but there's something you mentioned about the, the gift, the, the, the faith before, before the cross and faith after the cross. And uh, it's here in the, book of, in the book of Hebrews that mentioned the faith of the people in the past. Yes. And it mentioned the faith of the, the patriarchs, mentioned the faith, faith of the great people, the prophets, and, and the men of God. And, and something very, that you mentioned that is very, very important here. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 39. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 39. And then you, we are coming back, you just give us that, and then we are coming back after the break to mm-hmm. read verses as you explain. Mm-hmm. All this Hebrews 11, 39, all this, having obtained good testimony through faith, mm. did not receive the promise. Yes. God having provided mm. something better for us, mm. that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Mm. So it is explaining the faith of them before mm. and our faith after. Yes. Can I give you another word? Kindly. Galatians chapter 3, 
Galatians chapter 3 verse 23. Yes. Galatians. I want you to read that. The Bible says, but before faith came, we were kept under guard by the law. Meaning, all that time under the law, faith had not come. Why is he talking <laughs> about faith coming? <laughs> because most of those people, many of those people actually, Moses, mm. you know, yeah. yeah. I, except people like Enoch, Abraham, Abel, mm. those who are before the law. Mm. All right? Yes. But still, the Bible says, but before, before faith, faith came, came, we were kept under God by the law, kept for faith, which would afterward be revealed. You see, so they are saying there is this faith that the law is keeping them until that faith comes. It will take time for me to explain that. Let's, let's take the break. <laughs> I, I'll get deeper when we take the break, after the break. Yeah, please remember to subscribe. Remember to like, mm. remember to share, and remember to comment. Our numbers are right there at the bottom of your screen. Please share this. God this, bless you. This is wonderful. Yes. Receive life from the Spirit. Okay, Pastor, go ahead. Thank you. You had asked me about the faith, between the difference between the faith before? in the Old Testament, before the cross, and faith after. And so because... All through, we are seeing people of faith. Yeah, people like Abraham, you know, st talked about as faith. Then we have this faith in the New Testament. Yes. Which we are calling a gift. Yes. It's not your own faith. Uh -huh. You know? Yes. It's the faith. If you look at, uh, of course, Galatians chapter 20 and verse 20 um, uh, in the King James, the original. Galatians 2, uh, authorized King, King James Version, it <laughs> says, I, I am crucified with Christ, and nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Mm -hmm. And the life which I now live in the flesh, mm -hmm. I live by faith in the Son no, of no, God. No, 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 uh, that's not the King James. Okay. By the faith. Okay. By the faith of the Son of God. By so the Paul faith. says, that who are crucified and we have Christ in us, we live this life, we live by the faith, by the faith of oh. the Son of God. Meaning how Jesus himself believes. Yeah. <laughs> we live by how Jesus has faith. It is his faith. It is his faith. It's a gift. So if I give you this, my Bible is a gift, yeah? Then it becomes yours. It's exactly the way it was before I gave it. Yes. It does not change in value. Mm -mm. It doesn't change in, in quality mm -mm. or effectiveness. No. Are you getting? Yes. So I was saying, in salvation, the magnitude, the expansiveness. You know, in salvation, we were a different creature. Now yeah. we are new creatures. Yes. We were in darkness. Now we are light. We, we were completely poor, now we are enriched by his grace. I mean, you see the extreme mm. endowment that we have in, uh, in salvation, then you know that our own faith cannot be able to generate that. And therefore, <laughs> uh, therefore, we were given his faith as a gift. So faith is a gift of God. Grace is a gift of God. Oh, yes. Salvation is, is a, a gift, gift of God. God. Not of works, Pastor, lest anyone should boast. How do you explain that? Yeah, because we have tendency of boasting. <laughs> so people can say, oh, they have this grace because of what they have done. The others would say, oh, I'm so born again, or I'm so, so saved. I'm more saved than you because of this. Because people want to measure it, each other or measure themselves against others yes. to see, you know, it gives them the right to boast. <laughs> and then you see, I have more faith than yours, so my <laughs> salvation is better than yours. You see, so to eliminate that, <laughs> to eliminate all that boasting, it gives us grace as a gift, salvation, salvation as a, a gift, gift, faith, faith as, as a, a gift. gift the works of God, lest anyone should. Be. Lest anyone. So here we are told in Galatians, Paul is explaining to them mm. 
that before faith came yes you know before faith came galatians 2 verse 23 yes bef- uh, no 3 verse 23 before faith, faith came, came we were kept, kept under god by the law kept for the faith which would afterward be revealed mm. which faith is this verse 24 but before yeah therefore the law was our tutor to bring us is that to christ yes to bring us to christ, christ that, that we, we might, might be justified, justified by, faith. by faith continue but after faith has come who is this faith <laughs> and how does this faith come christ is the faith of christ this faith is a person remember person. the life is his life yes. the grace is his la- <laughs> grace the power is his power then how is it then it can be our faith if it's, it is his life yes it is his righteousness yes it is his grace yes. it is his power are you getting yes then we come to faith we say then ah it's our faith it's, co- it's inconsistency. The, this what is called biblical consistency. In interpretation of scripture, <laughs> hermeneutics, there is consistency. Are you getting yes. So everything cannot be his, but when it comes to our faith, <laughs> we claim, ours. no, 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 this must be ours. It's me who believed. It's my faith. <laughs> As if we generated it at some point. As if we generated. In that case, there are things we can never attain we can never have because we can only generate faith to a particular extent according to our knowledge yet this faith that we have Mm. in christ Mm. the faith of jesus christ that we have been given Mm. by the expression of that faith Mm. we receive salvation Mm -hmm. and everything that accompanies salvation we receive the grace of god we receive the salvation that it brings yeah, you remember in the Old Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, mm. because they are Old Testament. Yes. It was according, mm. according to your faith. To your faith. But when you come to the New Testament, yes. you see it in Ephesians, you see it in Galatians, you see it in Romans. Mm. It is according to the riches of his grace. Hallelujah. It's not according to your faith. Mm-mm. It's according to the riches of his grace. Oh, people need to hear that. People need to hear that. The difference between the Old Testament and the New when it comes to faith. Jesus told them, let it be done unto you according to your faith. Yeah, what you have believed when is the, what you get. The woman came with the issue of blood and Jesus touched him and said, it does, let it be done unto you according to your faith. Yes, but now when we come to the New Testament, after, after the cross, see, I said that's, that's the, when the New Testament starts, yes. after the shedding of the blood. Yes. That's when the new will, the New Testament begins. Yes. After that, it is no longer according to your faith. <laughs> because if it is according to your faith, the endowment of salvation will be different. This one will receive little, that one will receive much, yes. that one will receive much more. Yes. Are you getting? Yes. But in the New Testament, it is his faith. It is. I can give you another scripture. If you go to Ooh. Acts chapter 3. Yes, let's do it. Go let's. to Acts chapter 3, verse 15, 16. Let's do it. Uh, Acts chapter 3, verse uh, 16. Mm. Uh, this is according to oh, the New King James, yes. And his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong. Uh-huh. Whom you know, yes, the faith which comes through him, him is not the man. Him, capital H, which means Jesus. Yes. Him has given him, this perfect, (laughs) through the faith of him, Jesus, Mm. has given him, the man, Mm. perfect perfect soundness. soundness. So 
Peter and John are saying it's not even our faith. <laughs> yeah? It's faith in his name, faith that is through Jesus. Mm. His faith. Oh, yes. Working in Peter and John. We hear you. So it's a gift. It is a gift. It is a gift. Are you getting it? And a powerful gift. Yes. Oh, Pastor. Yes. Uh, I, I, yes, we, we allow me to, to go ahead. That is now in verse, um, uh, verse 9, note of works, lest anyone should boast. Boasting has been removed. For we are, for... That's just, because. Be, just the way you, you explained, for by grace, mm. explaining, explaining how we are the portrayance of the exceeding graces of his grace in kindness for two of us by Jesus Christ, for by grace you have been saved. Again, there's another four in verse 10. Yeah. Uh, not of works let any man should boast, for we are his workmanship. Mm. So he's saying, he's saying, because by grace you have saved, been saved, because that word for means because. Mm. It's an outcome, it's progressive, it's mm. a build up. Mm. Mm. The result of this is mm. you are saved. Mm. By grace, through faith, yes. you are saved. Yes. So why were you saved? By grace, through, through faith. faith. Why? Because yeah. you are his workmanship. <laughs> are you getting? Mm. Created in Christ Jesus for good works. It means that you're given grace and faith and salvation because of the good works you are prepared for. Because of what God wants you to do. Oh, yes. Because of what you are designed to do. Oh, yes. And the Bible tells us that these good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So it means they are good works that we were prepared beforehand to walk in. Mm. But we could not walk in them mm. outside salvation. You could not walk with, in them mm. without faith. <laughs> you could not walk in them without except faith. by the grace of God. So he's talking about this journey, which is a journey of pure grace, faith, all right? Mm. Salvation, which is also, yeah, by grace and faith. You cannot be able to do the work, the works mm. of God outside salvation. Because remember, we started at verse 7, yes. that you're supposed to be an example of something. Yes. What are you supposed to be an example of? Mm -hmm. The things you're supposed to be an example of yes. are located in salvation. They're in salvation. You see, and these things that are in salvation are the ones that are called what you're supposed to do. There's what Christ has done. Yes. But... He has done that so that you can do others. Mm -hmm. And those things you are doing is to be an example of grace. Is to be an example of his... Mm -hmm. You remember verse 7? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, as you do them, mm -hmm. and as they happen in your life, yes. you become an example of his goodness mm -hmm. and of his kindness. Mm -hmm. So that cannot happen before you are saved. Oh, yes. All right? Yes. That cannot happen without faith. Yes. For we walk by faith. faith and not by sight. The righteous shall live uh, by faith. faith. So we are given that faith yes. so that we who have been made mm -hmm. as good workmanship mm -hmm. can do the good works. Oh, hallelujah. Pastor, please, please explain this further. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. Does this mean we are his workmanship, he has worked in us, or he's working in us to do what we're doing now? Is it the working he has worked in us through faith and, and through grace before to make us who we are, or what we now do as a, do as a consequence by his grace? This workmanship is what the new creation was designed to be and to do. Mm. There is how, and that is why this endowment, all these gifts of God we are talking about, are supposed to be to equip mm -hmm. this creature called the new creation. Oh, yes. Yeah? To equip them, to change them. You know, workmanship is, is the artistry 
Okay, the, but we, but now we talk about artisans of craft or crafts people, craftsmen. Mm. The molding. The molding, the work, the artistry of this person. We call that their workmanship. The way they have designed this work and the way they have brought it out and the way they have displayed it is what is called workmanship. We are his. So we are his display, design, and his creation. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. So <laughs> there is this person that is called the workmanship of God who is in Christ Jesus. Meaning this person has, is a direct product of what Christ has done. Mm. The death and the resurrection of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Meaning what? That this work, the, the, this work mm. artist, mm. this work of art mm. is a beneficiary of his life, his mm. righteousness, mm. his grace, his faith, mm. his goodness, all the things that have come through Christ. They are in this this is, a pro this is a product. Now this is what is supposed to be the example. <laughs> Hey, uh, I, I believe we are all understanding. I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be the example. Mm. Are you getting? Mm. Of all those things that Christ has, or Christ has, mm. or has endowed us with has, in himself. Has put all in us. All those things that the Father designed, that those in Christ mm. should be and should have, and should do. Wow. wow. You see, should be. Mm -hmm. So should. who are you? Yes. Should have. What do you have? have? And should do. What can you do? <laughs> and that is why he says, should be, should good have, works. and should do. Good works prepared beforehand. Beforehand that we should walk in them. I love TPT of that. <laughs> Can you read that? We have become his poetry. Yeah. A recreated people that will fulfill the destiny he has given each of us. For we are joined to Christ, the anointed one. Even before we were born, God planned in advance our destiny and the good works that we would do to fulfill it. Yeah. So you see, that fulfillment of this is what exemplifies grace. So there's a grace in being. What has being. grace made you? Paul speaking, he says, I am who I am by the grace of God. <laughs> yes. What has the grace of God made you? Number two, mm. what has the grace of God given you? Mm. All right? Bestowed. Number three. Yes. What is the grace of God doing through. in and through you? That's the workmanship. Yes. Um, so let's not limit it to whether people sin or not. There is, the law never encouraged sin. New Testament, does Christ that. or grace does never, never encourage sin. Yes. And I think... To claim that the grace of God will encourage sin is insulting grace. And it's lack of understanding of yeah, grace. Yeah, it's insulting grace. Are you getting it? Yes. Yeah. Because there is nowhere in scripture mm. that grace mm. ever, ever, ever encourages or gives license to sin. And it does not mean that the more grace, the abundant grace we have, we are... We are Most people are, are feeling them, they are all over the place praying. In, in prayer mountains, prayer centers, church cashers, vigil meetings, praying for more grace. Is it because they have, is it because they are bound in sin? Mm -mm. You see, so if, if you look at the grace of God and, and the sin, you're looking at the very tiniest, the beginning, okay. where sinners become righteous. <laughs> All right? Mm. But it goes on beyond that. It goes on beyond that. Mm. And I've said it's what we have become, yes, what we, we have, have, and, and what, what he's doing. Through us and through for us. us. Are you seeing? Yes. Yeah. That's powerful, Pastor. Uh, that's something to think about. I've never seen, uh, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared before and that we should walk in them like that. <laughs> <laughs> Verse 11. Therefore, remember that you, 
Now he's taking us back to, remember that you once Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision, but that which is called circumcision, made in the flesh by the hands, that at that time you were without Christ. It is important to remember, Pastor. Yeah, you'll you'll yeah. tell us why. Yeah. That in the time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of the promise, having no hope and without God in the world, but now in Christ Jesus, you who were once afar off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. So it's talking about, you see, I told you that the grace of God was not for good people. It's not about qualification. Mm -mm. So it's telling us the candidates of this grace. Okay? Mm. That we were without Christ. So we were not godly. Aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. <laughs> meaning we were not included in those covenants of Israel. Oh, yes. We see nowadays, I see people come... <laughs> They go around claiming every covenant. That they were aliens too. Oh, you see, and the mistake was, is this. You know, the Old Testament is given us for learning, mm. to learn. Mm. Are you getting? Mm. But you will see covenants that were given to the Jews. Mm. You see the Gentile claiming. Mm. You see uh, a little man claiming... <laughs> What was given to Jacob? <laughs> oh, no, 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 what was given to Moses and, and the children of Israel? They say, no, no, no. Whatever the Bible says, it says about me. It speaks to me. No, no. <laughs> there are specific covenants that were given to... The Bible says in the book of Romans, mm. the law speaks to those who are under the law. Mm. So here is God. He takes the children, Abraham, mm. from... A background of idolatry. Mm. He calls him. Abraham obeys him and becomes an example of faith. He walks after God. He walks after God. He does everything God tells him to do, mm. even to the extent of sacrificing his son. All right? And the Bible says we are told that Abraham believed God. How did he believe God? By obeying. And it was imputed to him as righteousness. So sometimes that is the righteousness mm. people bring into the new covenant. Mm. The righteousness of obedience. Mm. So you, they fail to understand that the righteousness of Abraham that was imputed to Abraham yes. came as a consequence. So Abraham's faith, uh, righteousness yes. was a reward. Was a reward for his faith and his obedience. Our righteousness is a gift. Is a gift. Our righteousness is a gift. It's not because we obeyed God. Mm -mm. It's not because we, we had faith in God too mm -mm. much. Mm -mm. No, it's called the righteousness of faith because we've been given and received it by faith. Yes. Are you getting? Yes. So you continue like that. Mm. Then you find uh, uh, people like Moses. Yes. Are you getting? Mm. ABK becomes a nation. Moses is born out of that nation. Mm. And then he's sent by God to mm. go and deliver them. And yes. Moses speaks to them yes. the word of God, which is the law. Yes. You get? Yes. You see? Mm. So that is spoken to the Jew. Yes. The Gentile was never under the law. And never under those In covenants. fact, let me just tell you. Mm. If you read Galatians, mm. you read Romans... Mm. One of the things you will discover in the early chapters mm -hmm. that not the whole world was not under the law. And yet sometimes we treat it like the whole world was under the law. As if it was universal. The law was not universal. And that is why we say we were aliens to the commonwealth. Mm. At that time we were without Christ. We, we were without Christ and we were aliens, aliens from the Commonwealth of Israel. We were not counted as one of them. And strangers from the covenants, covenants of, promise. of promise. We were not a part of the... So, I'm going to say something <laughs> dangerous here. Yes, go ahead, Pastor. We were not in those promises mm. before. Mm -mm. And we are not now that we are in the... Now that we are, not, we are born again. Mm. So there are people who think that the moment that you get born again... Yes you have automatically entered mm. 
into that commonwealth of Israel. And uh, please explain. Because you are born again now, mm. you have automatically entered those covenants of promise. Mm. What God has done yes. is that he spoke, and of course there are promises and prophecies mm. that have to do with us, mm. the Gentiles. Yes. They have to do with the people that believe God. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I don't people, discount that. Yes, people there are from, words that in the Old Testament you can take, mm. like the Psalms yes. and, from, and others. You can take them and, and they and become, up. you know, in the Bible, you have statutes, you have commandments, you have the law, you, you, you have principles. Yes, ordinances. You can take ordinances, exactly. Mm. Ordinances are laws of how the kingdom or God works. Mm. Things like favor, things like mercy, mm. things like service, mm. things, those are ordinances. Yes. But ordinances are not law, the law of Moses. Mm. Okay? Mm. So they are statutes. Mm. Okay? Yes. So there is this thing that was called commandments and the law that was to govern the relationship between the children of Israel mm -hmm. and God. Yeah, yes. While they were still carnal men, natural people, natural men, yes. sinners, yes. rebellious people mm. who kept turn away from God. Mm. There is that that was supposed to regulate them. Yes. It cannot be the same thing that is regulating me and you now mm -mm. after Christ has died. Mm -mm. It's a whole new set of... It's exactly. So you see what God has done that in order, and that is what he's saying in Ephesians there. Mm. That yeah. in the time past you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of the promise, having no hope and without God in the world. The next verse. But now, yes, in Christ Jesus, you who were once afar off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Okay, next verse. For he himself is our peace, uh -huh. who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. So what has he done? He has taken the Jew mm. who was under the law mm. and those who were never under the law, mm. the aliens. Mm, yes to the covenants, yes. the, the, the strangers to the commonwealth, yes. and those who are under the covenants yes. and those who are of the commonwealth, yes. he has made them one in himself through his blood. Mm. And to do so, mm. they are no longer under the old commonwealth. Mm. They, were no, they are no longer under the old covenant. Mm. So he did not take the Gentile mm -hmm. and bring them under the covenant of the Jews. Mm -mm. No. He took the Jew mm. and the Gentile, mm. he made them one mm. and gave them a new covenant. So even the Jews are not under the old covenant. No, no, no. no. And he has not brought us where the Jews were in those days. No, he is not taking us where the Jews were. Mm -hmm. He's not taking the Jews where the Gentiles were. Mm -hmm. So he's taken the Gentiles and the, and Jews, the Jews and, and brought, brought them, them in together in Christ. A new place. Yeah, that's called Christ. And in Christ, by the blood of Christ, he has made both to be one. So when we are talking about one body, we are not talking about a body that is divided Jew and Gentile. Mm -mm. That is why Paul was stoned for saying there is no longer Jew and not Gentile because the Jews were happy to enjoy the privileged position. And we, we, we give it. We thank God for <laughs> yeah. the Jews because yes. it's from them yes. that we got the Messiah. Mm. We got mm. to know the true and living God. We, yeah. we appreciate the firstborn of God, yes. the Jews. We appreciate them and I, I, I bless them. Mm. I thank God for the Jews. All right? We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Mm. But in the new covenant, mm. yeah, mm. the Jews and the Gentiles are one. That's what Paul teaches us. There's neither female no, nor female. There's no Jew nor Greek. Nobody here can be said, you, 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 are, you are Scythian, you, you are barbarian. No. We are out of time. We have to continue next time. Please, Pastor, pray. Oh, wonderful. Praise the name of Jesus. <laughs> oh, that you may understand the grace of God. The grace of God is so amazing, Ooh. so rich, so infinite, 
so amazing. You even discussing it, you can even sense the presence of God. It's amazing. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every viewer. Oh, yes. I pray that they may understand the grace of God, mm. that they will not take it for granted. Treat it as something of minor importance and befits its purpose. But, oh God, I pray that the, the eyes of their understanding will be flooded with light, that they will be enlightened, mm. that they will understand the mystery of God, mm. the secret wisdom, the secret knowledge of God, that they will know, mm. yes, the grace of God and in knowledge, mm. they will experience the working of this grace, oh, yes. they will experience the faith of Christ at work in them, mm. in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. Father, we honor you and we thank you, mm. in Jesus' name. We thank you for those that are giving their offering and their time. Yes. We ask that you increase them yes. in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen and amen. God bless you so much. Thank you for joining us tonight, this evening, until next Monday. Please mm. remember there are numbers at the bottom of your screen. Mm. That is uh, uh, the phone numbers mm. for you to communicate with us. If you have a question, if mm. you have a comment, we'd like to know whether this program is joy is um, is, uh, is uh, defying you. Yes. Let's know what God is doing in your life. Yes. God bless you so much. There's also another number. The pay bill number is so that you can be able to send in your offering, yes. your partnership for the program. It takes money. Mm. Everything now, now is money, money, everything. You know, for us to continue shooting this, you know, please partner with us and the Lord God's going to bless you. Mm. Now, it's me here and Pastor Solomon Were mm. from JCC mm. Embakasi. Thank you so uh, much. Going through the book of Ephesians hey. and hope to see you next time as we get deeper into this book. God bless you so much. I Amen. have a lot of questions for him after this. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> Amen. Amen.